Hey guys, welcome to the farm. Today I wanted to give you an update real quick. It's a Saturday morning and it's looking very beautiful. And we're about ready to get deluged with a bunch of rain. So I thought I'd give you an update on what the garden is looking like. It's been about a little over a week since I did the last tour. We have planted quite a bit in the last week and a lot of my seed has emerged now. So I wanted to go over what it's kind of looking like. Let me set my coffee down. Um, we have um, this bed. This has got my leeks and potatoes in it. And I have a row here that I thought I put potatoes, but it looks like I only did one row. I kind of spread them around the garden. I don't like to have big blocks of things. Um, it's better to diverse plant because then you don't have, if you have a problem with pests in one area, you may not have that problem in another area. Plus then it's better to, it kind of masks the scent for certain, especially like brassicas and stuff. Um, if you plant them all together, then you're going to attract the pests more. I also planted quite a bit of flowers in my garden. Um, I kind of act like these garden beds are kind of like other flower containers for myself. I really love flowers. Flowers are what do it for me. So I wanted to make sure I added lots of pretty things in this year. These are my pepper plants. It's a garden salsa row. And then these three are three different kinds of peppers. And then um, I have... Uh, marigolds here and then these are snapdragons and gan uh, gansia oh gosh i can never remember how to say that one i have some brussels sprouts and another brussels sprout i lost this one over here it just didn't make it through our really bad cold snap a couple weeks ago um and then i have more marigolds and another round of peppers in this area right here i have planted a uh, dragon's tongue green beans or dragon tongue beans they're a small bush variety i got them from baker's creek they've been planted about a week but they haven't quite come up yet but that's okay i know i do have a section like right here i plan to stick a couple sunflowers in um see how they do a lot of my nasturnum have come up around the edges and then i have a blank spot here next to these peppers that i have planted i did put some cucumbers in over here and I plan to have them trail out this way and then I have another row of potatoes and I did throw up some radish seeds oops sorry I threw up some radish seeds over top the potatoes um the potatoes are going to take a while to really get going they they take a, quite a while to get ready to harvest so there's going to be plenty of room the radishes are going to come up so fast then be ready within a month-ish to be pulled that it's not a big deal for me to just do two in one area i do have some lettuce over here that i have planted that i really didn't think were going to come up and then we got all that rain and there they there they are they've come up um over here i have the same thing two rows of lettuce and two more rows of potatoes and then i have a blank spot that i think i'm going to do sunflowers in i haven't decided because the sunflowers i have get about four feet which i'm afraid might shade my tomatoes too much but i'm not i'm not too certain yet what i'm going to do i'll figure it out eventually i do have two more cucumbers that i plan to have trail out in this big gravel area um i also added more marigolds over here and i had this bright idea i had all these pansies that i had in my spring containers but we were so cold this spring that by the time it was ready to plant you know we had that polar vortex a little over a week ago almost two weeks ago now where it was 26 degrees none of my spring containers looked flourishing they just weren't they weren't happy and now it's hot enough like within a week it became hot enough to plant all of my summer plants and so I didn't want to have these, these um, pansies sitting in containers all summer. I want them, you know, to put them somewhere that they'll thrive and look pretty, which means that they need a little bit of shade. They also don't get huge. So I thought I had this bright idea that maybe if I underplanted my tomatoes, which I planned a single stem up stakes, and there's not going to be a lot of foliage at the bottom of these tomatoes because I'll, 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 tr I'll trim them up so that, you know, we can hopefully prevent blight and things at least for a while but uh i had this bright idea that these pansies might look really neat in the dappled shade underneath the tomato plants they don't get huge they don't get tall so i'll keep you updated to see how it ends up looking it didn't cost me anything because i had to put them somewhere and why not in my vegetable garden i do have another row of snapdragons here and more nasturnum um, and then i had these i lost the tag and now i don't remember what they are um, this smaller one is like a trumpet flower. 
it's a strictly trailing flower, so I expect it to kind of maybe trail over a little bit, but I'm obsessed with the color. I don't know, I, I want everything to be orange this year, nice and spicy. These trailers are called Mystic Mix Mimilis. Say that three times fast. Um, I have a bunch more tomatoes over here and two more rows of peppers with the radishes kind of interspersed among them. Um, I have another row of lettuce. I do have noodle beans and sunset runner beans planted on the edges. Just a, a few. I do plan to put up cattle panel arches. So um, this is what I have been using um, to plant all of my vegetables. I really, really like it. I've been using it for about two or three years now. And it's a slow release with micro ripe. I can never say it. Micro rise. It helps with root development. And I mean, I can move a plant mid season and it, it, it roots really well for me. I don't usually lose a lot of things. I've really liked it. And it's pretty easy to find as well. I got this bag from Walmart, so it's easy to pick up random places. Um, I did put in some kale. I had two cabbages over here that kind of mimicked these two. They were over here, but they just, they weren't doing well. I pulled them out, obviously you can see them right there. Um, whereas these two look like they're gonna take. And we, here in Northern Indiana, I'm within an hour of the lake. It, we have a period in July and maybe early August where it gets in the 90s, but it doesn't last long. We're more of a 80s, low 90s kind of summer. Um, and we just don't get like super hot like people in the South do or in the desert region who cannot do spring plants um, all year. I have had other people tell me that they do well with them all summer. So we'll see, because they, they went in weeks ago, but with it being so cold, they were just stunted. They weren't actually growing. They were surviving, but they weren't actually growing. It's only in the last week or two that this guy has put on all these leaves. So I'm gonna leave them and see how they do. If they don't do well, well, I'll just plant something else here in the middle of the summer. And then over here, I have some beets that I put down that I can- Sorry put. about that. I got a little cut off by my phone. I had a phone call. Um, but anyways, I planted all these beets and I completely forgot about them. They weren't coming up, they weren't coming up. And then, like I said, we had all that rain and there they are. But beets, I'll probably thin them out a little bit away from the tomatoes and let, let some of them go. I'm not a huge beet person, but I wanna try them again, um, growing them myself to see how I felt about them. Maybe try cooking them in a couple different ways. So if you guys got any ideas about how you like to eat beets, and not pickling them because I don't I don't like them pickled. But uh, let me know. I'd like to try some different, just something different. Um, I have a bunch more nasturtium, so along the edge here, and some more marigolds. A lot more. These are mostly my heirloom tomatoes, uh, my indeterminates. Although I did get one. I think that one is my one determinate that I didn't even realize was a determinate until it was too late. But it still gets about two foot, so I might move him. I still got time. I have another little area of um, snapdragons and some dianthus, annual dianthus over here with some nasturtium, nice little flowery corner. I'm going to want to attract a lot of pollinators to this area and I just like to look at them. So um, over here I have some kohlrabi. Uh, it's a little late but I, these starts were looking pretty good. I tried to start some from seed and they sprouted up and I transplanted them out into my garden earlier this spring and then we had that polar vortex and all of the little seedlings just did not do well. They were really, really young. So um, I have some spinach here, which I don't know how well it's going to do. Spinach is more of a cool crop. We'll see. I'll let them go. It's, spinach is easy to pull up if it doesn't do well. Or I could keep it trimmed and then see how it does in the fall. So over here I have four more cabbage and an eggplant in the center. Um, and then I have... Oh, I think these are my Danver carrots. No, no they're not. This is my lettuce. This is lettuce. Hanvers lettuce. I need to thin a lot of it out, but um, then over here I have four more carrot, uh, cabbages and more lettuce. I have some more dianthus and then a patch of peppers and snapdragons. And then I have four little bitty determinate good-hearted tomatoes. That's the new one out by Proven Winners this year. I grew these from seed. They're like a 20, like a 12, what is it? 12 to 16 inch. They're not very big. Little itty bitty small determinate tomatoes. Um, I'm hoping they kind of like a cascading shape. So I kind of plan to have them cascade maybe a little over the side. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'll keep you updated. A bunch of 
marigolds again and a couple more tomatoes i was really sad to see that one of my jet stars it got like i planted it and a couple days later somebody topped it so it lost its top i'm thinking about letting one of these um suckers grow on and maybe clip it and root it and start it over I'm not sure. I have a bunch of Jet Star. I have four of them. I don't really need that many. So we'll see. I uh, might put in something else here in that area. Or I might, maybe I'll just start the starts and give them away to people. You can do that. You can, this right here is the main stem. And then in the armpit between the leaf and the main stem, this is called a sucker. And you can, tomatoes root so easily, you could clip this once it gets a little bit bigger at least. You can clip it and root it in some soil um, or water and it'll start a whole new tomato plant, a clone. Since you're doing it from a cutting, it will clone the plant. Um, I have some bok choy, purple bok choy here. It's the first year I've tried them. I really wanted to try them just because I think they're beautiful. They're purple and they have the prettiest vase shape and little curved leaves so I wanted to see I heard they're kind of spicy it's not something that I love I'm not a big spicy person but I'll try it honestly I'll probably grow it just for the beauty of it and give it away or cook it and make my husband eat it <laughs> um, I have some more tomatoes and two more peppers uh, as well as some spinach that I had forgotten about I might move the spinach, but we'll see. I have a bunch of more onions here. These are both candy and walla wallas. They have put on quite a bit of growth in just a week. I mean, this thing was so spindly a week and a half ago. Yeah. And I also want to try and keep the nasty ends trimmed up because you don't want to weigh down the top of the plant, especially at the end of the season. If you weigh them down, It'll break their necks sooner, and then the plant will stop growing. So, And then this is my center garden, which I think I told you guys I need to move the lavender. I planted the lavender and had tons of high hopes, but this side seems fine. But I'm having draining, drainage issues over here. There might be like some clay soil underneath. I'm not quite sure, but these lavender over here are not liking all the water that we've gotten this spring. So I may just pull them. And I'll plant some kind of annual around the edge and inside I have all my herbs. And then I plan to get like some three foot sunflowers, maybe that or playing the blue salvia, which is a huge pollinator attractant. If you want to attract pollinators to your garden, plant salvia. I mean, just about any kind of salvia, annual, perennial, perennials, they're not going to get blooms all season. You'll get them most of the season especially if you cut it back, but salvia just attracts the bees like nobody's business. So I love it. I have some purple ruffle basil in the middle time. These are four clocks. I don't plant a lot of four clocks. I never have, but this year, like the seed packet was just calling to me. So I started a ton from seed, which was really easy. They grew from seed very, very easily. So um, I'll give you one last update over here. This is the new beds my husband built me. This is the area of the garden that used to be a concrete pad. So we built the beds and we're trying to figure out how much space we need between them or if we want to fit in another bed, which is why they're sitting over here. This all needs cleaned up still. We're going to pull all the concrete up and then um, bring in some dirt and level it off with the backhoe. And then we'll put the, put the fabric down and then put the beds down and cut, cut the center out. So... Um, we'll, we'll keep you updated on how that goes. The chicken run is running on the other side of this wall here. So it's very easy to take my scraps and just toss them over, which was half the point. <laughs> um, this way I'd give you a small little update on, not my tool pile, my front of the barn. I just got this all cleaned up the other day. This is our barn. If you guys haven't seen this in our tour videos before. I think I did one two years ago where I toured the inside of this barn. It's an entertainment space upstairs. Maybe I'll show you. But I finally cleaned up my bed. I mulched it with some compost. I have drainage, not drainage, I have drought issues. The barn shrouds the rain from this section, so I always need to hose it. Yeah, I have a Bobo hydrangea here, but he just, he needs more water. So we'll see, I might change it. I need to finish planting in that container. 
Then over here I have another hosta and a bleeding heart and another bleeding heart that needs water. <laughs> Um, but this is kind of what I've got going on over here so far. It looks so much better than it did. Um, it had so many weeds. I think I just need to continue layering up compost on top of the soil to try and help eliminate all the weeds this farm has. Um, this yeah. is our barn. Um, it's nothing fancy. It's a huge barn. This is actually my, a wall my husband built. It does swing out. Like he has it a connector here on the other side of the wall and this whole barn will open out and there's a wood shop behind it. But for the most part, this is the bathroom my husband built. It used to be, um, this used to be a milking barn. So this is like the milking, I don't know, they used to store milk and stuff in it. It has a drain. So we do, it's just the sink. But I thought it was pretty neat here. Let me get out of the mirror real quick. And then I have this antique mirror that we put in used to be part of a dresser. You can kind of see the mirror is not perfect. It needs the glass replaced, but you're not putting makeup on in this barn. So it's good enough you see yourself. Um, yeah, nothing too fancy. And then this way, this is the staircase my husband built. This used to be a horse stall. So I have this antique rocker here, a double rocker. And um, you can't, it does work, but I don't know, nobody says it. it's there for pretty. <laughs> and my handy dandy fire extinguisher. Can't have, can't have a barn without one of these. Um, this is our staircase. It leads up into the barn. Well, here's the barn loft. Oh, I should turn the lights on for you. It's a pretty big barn up here. Like I said, we're gonna have a party here today. Um, it's a going away party for my sister. She's joined the military. So we put this in, this came out of an old camp like a children's camp. They replaced their kitchen and my brother works there. So we were able to get this for free and it's kind of like a nice kitchenette area to set up food. And then um, picnic tables for the kids and just tables and a projector. We have a drum set, my husband plays drums and ping pong and yeah, it'll be a fun spot for us to have our kids play in for you know years to come. I'm a firm believer in cultivating a fun environment at home. It's where you spend the most of your time. We don't, we don't take a lot of vacations. We don't go a lot of crazy fun places. So I wanna make sure that it's a great place to be, to be at home, so. P.S. Right. if you wanted to see some flower beds, I need to mulch. I need to finish weeding some of the little weeds that came up and mulch it, but I did put in this new flower bed recently. Um, I got some plants from Proven Winners. Some banana cream Shasta daisies, uh, a David Austin rose, that one, um, and a couple other things. And I love my new variegated Sambuca elderberry bush. It's new this year, but I really love the variegation on it. It's so pretty. Um, I need to. Finish filling out this section. I have a, vib a baby viburnum planted there. I have to put rocks around it so my kids don't get to it. But anyway, yeah, this was supposed to be a two second tour, but I thought I'd show you some other things. My, I have not cleaned this bed up from spring. It's the last one I need to do. I need to edge the grass and get the weeds pulled, but my peony plant is just, it's about ready to burst. It's got so many. And of course we had a bad wind the other day, so it's kind of leaning, but that's okay. Um, Penstemon, and this is a Sweet Fragrance Easy Elegance Rose. It's probably one of my favorite in the garden. And a Teasing Georgia, which I lost my trellis. It fell over, so I need to get something else up for it. And these beautiful, glorious iris. I love them. They were here. It's one of the only original plants I had on the farm. I had a ton of them, so they're everywhere. I have a ton over here next to my birdhouse in my well lump. They're just kind of shrouding my birdhouse right now. And I have a queen of Sweden, David Austin Rose right here, which I'm hoping will be kind of like, they're really, they're a very upright rose. So I'm hoping it'll kind of like peek up out of the front of these iris. I mean, there's nothing in front of it. So we'll see, hopefully it blooms beautiful and I will love it. I have a bed over here that I have an old bike. I want to repaint the bike a different color. I'm not sure 
what color, but red's not doing it for me. I just don't plant that many. I mean, I do like red, but in the actual in-ground plants, I don't have very many red ones, but I have some iris here, a lot of Asian lilies. These, I have three show-off forsythias. They're a dwarf, dwarf, thithia. I can't say it. A dwarf forsythia. Um, there's one here and one here, and there's one over here. So the, the trio of them, and they're very bright yellow color, is, it's perfect for this little flower bed. Um, more iris coming up, and then I love this phlox. It's beautiful by the bike wheel right there. And then um, more Asiatic lily. And then I'm so excited. My poppies just look amazing this year. Like, look at that. This has been here three years, so I want to get more of them. These are red poppies. Um, I have three, but I want to get more of them because I really like their ferny texture next to the iris. And then the Asiatic lily has a very different texture kind of too. And then I think I'm going to put some hostas maybe in the front for some bold. I don't know. I kind of love it when I have empty flower beds that I slowly do over time. That way I can really like determine what goes well together. Sometimes when I fill the beds up too fast, I just, I fill them up too fast and I'm not sure what I'm doing. <laughs> and that fills in and then I want to move it all. So, all right, I have another limelight over here. This is um, an elm tree. We have cut branches off, but then these suckers come back within like a year. This is just one year's growth. So I need to cut them again and then I think I need to get some kind of spray to keep the limbs from here down from sprouting back out. This is my front flower bed and it's really filling in nicely. The tulips are done. They almost, they're, I need to wait till they're ready to be cut back, but I technically could deadhead them. Um, you can do that without cutting the actual foliage. The foliage is what needs to stay behind. Um, I have a lot of coral bells back here and some, oh, I can't think of what it's called. Yep, I can't think of it. We'll go back to that. Some sweet woodruff, lamb's ear. I posted a picture the other day of this combo. I really love the broad ladies mantle leaf with the lamb's ear where it's like that cool icy white blue color and then the sharp look of the Asiatic lily. And then you have the evergreen. This is a weeping white spruce. I actually topped it a year or two ago. Broke the tip off when I planted it, but it's growing its own leader now. So that makes me super happy. This is one spot in my bed I think I'm probably the most proud of, especially in the fall. I have it flanked with, this is a summer wine nine bark and then a limelight hydrangea and a limelight hydrangea, which this one's a little bit bigger, but they'll catch up. So they get pretty big and they fill in the whole back area. This is a glow blue spruce on standard and then three big bang spirea. They emerge orange and then they get really lime greeny all summer and they bloom a beautiful pink color. And then I have another summer wine nine bark and then um, an Alba Alberta spruce behind that to flank the corner. And then a orange rocket barberry on the end. And I just love the way that these plants go together. I just, I don't know how I did it, but I need to like repeat. <laughs> like from here to here makes me so happy. So I hope you guys have spots like that in your yard and you guys should post pictures and tag me in them so I can see them for inspiration. Um, over here, this corner, I love the top half with all the hostas in the shade, shady all the way to here, and then from here it's sunny. I have a weeping spruce, uh, oh my gosh, a weeping black beech. I don't think it's a black swan, but I want to train it to, into like a tall umbrella tree. So I will top it probably this year. I don't want it to get any taller than that. We had a really bad year the year I moved it, so I lost the, this branch and this branch. So I'll probably trim it up. And um, then I have some, Siberian iris here and here. I love this grassy texture next to the hostas and the ferns. This is something that I like because I don't like lilies. I don't like how nasty lilies can start looking yellow and scraggly, whereas these all summer never look scraggly. I kind of have to deadhead the seed pods from the iris, but I love the foliage on these. And then I have a drainage problem over here, so I have to dig this whole area up. 
over here, I just, hi, sweetie. I just redid this section this year. I had this and it was doing so well. And then that freeze that we had just froze everything off. It's probably one of the plants I might lose this year because of that polar vortex. But I got some Jack's, no, Queen of Diamonds or Jack of Diamonds. It's one of the two. I have a swooping circle of them. This one came really bad in shipping, but as soon as I planted it, all the leaves died, but then now it's pushing new foliage. So I'll have four here in like a sweeping arc around some hellebores that I have coming up. And then I have an oak leaf hydrangea here and some hostas. I kind of want to fill it in with some more ground cover, but I haven't decided if I like this spurge. I think that's what it's called. I just moved this one, so it's why it's kind of yellow. Um, but I don't know if I'm a little nervous that it's going to take everything over. So I might switch this to like sweet woodruff over in this area or more of the lamium. Um, and then this is what this messy flower bed looks like. So when I get this cleaned up, we'll do a video of that. Thank you so much, you guys, for joining us here on our farm to view our gardens and to see what we're doing. Continue to watch us here on YouTube and Instagram and also on Facebook for more updates on all of our flowers and containers and especially to see how our garden keeps shaping up with everything we've got planted so far. Um, the more likes we get, the better people will see our videos on YouTube. So I really appreciate that. Um, and I really hope you've enjoyed everything. I just want to encourage everybody to get out there and try gardening. You learn something new every season and you can only get better. So thank you so much and hope you guys have a great summer.